Phoenix Rising by Michael Anastas. On the roof, there was a landing pad designed for a helicopter, and it was there that Dragon Matrix brought in his Pidgeot in what could have resulted in a crash landing, had Dragon not practiced such landings thousands of times before. A priest, still dressed in his green and white robes, stood off to the side, waiting for him. This was Freeman Bible, who would have been the trainer of Ser Angel, had his brother, Brendan's wish, been fulfilled. Dragon stepped down from the back of his Pidgeot and called it back into its Pokeball, and Freeman stepped forward. Your theory was correct, said Dragon calmly. Giovanni did come to America. What's more amazing is that he and his lackeys were spotted 12 miles north of here, heading south. So they're coming to Sierra Mona? said Freeman in shock. I seriously doubt that Giovanni would perform such a foolish trick. From the looks of things, he has more to worry about. Merlin was successful at dispatching the problem caused by whatever the refinery was producing. There were no Ragnarok casualties. There were four minions at the refinery, your brother Brendan and Merlin's father, who were both killed before the bomb went off, a former Team Rocket soldier who is currently without name, and Ash's rival, Gary, who could have survived. Even more surprising was that one of the wraiths made an appearance before the destruction of the refinery. Even a ghost Pokemon could not have survived a blast as powerful as that made by the refinery. Freeman took a small slip of paper from one of his robe pockets. Go back to the pot about no Ragnarok casualties. He unfolded the note. Michael Anastas was reported missing the next day after the mission was accomplished. He and his Pokemon are nowhere to be found, and that happens to include... Something I've never heard of before. That was mentioned in the reports I received last night, said Dragon. Sarah Angel, the third attempt at a Mew clone. Her power is somewhere in between the now common Mewtwo and the Mew 3 catastrophe. However, it's stated that she lacked the ability to make decisions on her own, which I find hard to believe. The rule applier, said Freeman with a nod. The rule applier is a term that generally means, quote, bullshit that becomes reality. For example, Scyther and Electabuzz distinguish colors as emotions and are outraged at the color red. In the case of the Dark City gym leaders, both Electabuzz and Scyther heard various warnings from their trainer and any Pokemon officials that dared enter Dark City. Basically, they both heard these false warnings so many times that they finally decided it to be a fact, which contributed to Ash Ketchum's victory over both rival schools. In the same case, Ser Angel had been taught that she lacked the ability to make independent decisions, which she only discovered to be false when the Phoenix Trainers found her. It was actually a common phrase when Ash secretly earned his badge. Since he had just entered the League, it was decided that his badge remained undecided until he retired, and in the five years of battle he went through, a lot of the League's records leaked to Sierra Mana. So now we know just how fucked up the League's Pokédex really is. Freeman slid the note back into his pocket. Whatever the case, we have a problem, although it's possible there is an easy solution. Merlin tracked Michael to the San Manuel airport, where he apparently purchased a ticket for a flight to Sierra Lazis. That very flight is scheduled to arrive in two hours. Even in the thickest traffic, it would take us half that to reach the airport. Dragon nodded like he understood, which he probably did from the start. I trust that we will not be taking the highway? Not unless you want to, in which case I would recommend leaving now. He turned his back to Dragon and proceeded towards the door. I'll inform the others of our situation, but remember that Michael left San Manuel by his own willpower. It's possible that he may not be willing to come back with us once we find him. You think he's lost faith in the Phoenix? Freeman took a deep breath. You know nothing of the Phoenix. Then with an afterthought, he added, Unless, of course, that's the Pokemon you've been guarding all these years. Dragon kept his thoughts to himself as he took a Pokeball from his belt, called out his Pidgeot, and sailed off into the surrounding clouds. Nikki Fandolin, whom had been my temporary trainer until Michael volunteered for the mission, already knew that something was wrong. She had only heard how Merlin was already returning to Sierra Lazis, and that the legendary Ash Ketchum would be coming with him. Since he still fought in the leagues, it was important for him to remain away from Sierra Mana to avoid any ugly rumors which could cost him his career. For him to be coming here, only the world could have been at stake. 
She climbed up on the mana border walls, which nobody cared about because it made little sense for someone to want out of Sierra Mana, and walked on foot to the airport. Lavian, the most recent addition to her Pokemon lineup, walked idly beside her, listening to her thoughts as she spoke them out loud. Nikki had called him out, thinking he should get to know her better before he reached his evolving point. He was, after all, Nikki's first Pokemon that had been banned from the leaks, and she would have to rely on him completely for a very long time. Michael Anastas, the creator of Sanctum Cage, ran away, she said, directed towards nobody. And with him, Faith disappears as well, the angelic Pokemon which had been entrusted to my care. She bowed her head. Is this my fault? Was there something I could have done to prevent this? Lavian looked on in wonder, and knew instantly that she was in some sort of mental suffering. He gently brushed up beside her in a weak effort to comfort her. Nikki smiled and gave him an affectionate pat on the head. And that new one, she said, no longer hating herself. Another Mew clone. She turned to Lavian. They've been nothing but trouble in the past. Do you think she might have forced him to run? Lavian, of course, had no idea as to what she was talking about. Lavi, he said bluntly. Lavia Lavian. Nikki translated the words as best she could and came out with the message, You have tiny feet. She shrugged it off and kept walking. The airport suddenly appeared before her. She looked down at her watch and was surprised to find that she had almost an hour to spare. Off where the grass was still green, she sat down with the Pokemon she had just caught last week, stretched out on the grass, and looked up at the clouds, which were constantly blocked by the airplanes flying into the runway. No graduates this year, said Nikki with a sigh. No new Phoenix trainers. She turned to Lavian. Do you think the Royal Leagues will ever exist? Lavian shrugged his shoulders as best he could. Nikki sat up and crossed her legs. Hey, we have an hour to blow. I'm just trying to make idle conversation. Lavian took a step closer and sat down beside her. Lavi Lavian. Lay Lavia Avia Lavian. Nikki smiled and gently stroked the big cat's back. Thanks for trying, but I didn't understand a single word of that. She smiled cheerfully as Lavian licked her hand affectionately. Nikki turned to the side and stared down the barrel of a pistol. You wouldn't happen to know this safe way into Sierra Mana, would you? asked Giovanni. Nikki slowly got to her feet. Why would I tell you such a thing? Because it would be fairly easy for me to take your life. You're blind, said Nikki. And with that, the gun sailed through the air, followed by one of Nikki's sandals, and Lavian had Giovanni on the ground, almost crushed under his 900 pounds of weight. You're either blind or stupid to have not seen Lavian or the big orange bird on my jacket. She lifted the gun off its landing spot. Of course, I'd advise that you tell your little Pokemon sniper to get out of the bushes. Meow threw his sniper rifle off to the side and came out of the grass, shrugging his shoulders. I told you it wouldn't work. My charm shines in the light. You still have some explaining to do, said Nikki. Why are you here? Why do you think we're here? asked Giovanni sarcastically. We're here to watch the fireworks. Pardon? You didn't hear? Giovanni laughed. When Brendan Bible was killed, the Wraiths lost control over one of their greatest weapons the Mew clone called Serangel. Then, when the refinery was destroyed, they lost the ability to make another Serangel. Doesn't it seem odd that the new trainer of Serangel has suddenly disappeared so soon? If it isn't obvious to you, it's obvious to me. The race are going to attack the Phoenix trainers directly. Meowth raised an eyebrow. You knew all that? Giovanni smiled proudly. There are some things that are best left as secrets, especially since you haven't been all that sure as to what side you're on. He stressed the last words as he said them. Nikki gently pushed Lavian aside and lifted Giovanni off the ground by his tie. You seem to know a lot. Might I ask how you do? Giovanni smiled evilly. I hardly think you have time to ask me that. He looked up at the sky. It would appear that Michael's flight has arrived an hour early. Nikki shoved Giovanni to the ground and looked up at the plane flying towards them. It was the same plane they were looking for, a Boeing 767 embracing the Virgin Atlantic logo. It's the right kind, but what makes you think it's Michael's plane? And then, as if the timing couldn't have been any worse, one of the engines exploded. Giovanni smiled again. That. Nikki wasted no time in calling out the Pidgeot. Without thought of the consequences, she leapt onto his back and lifted off the ground. 
Lavian, keep your eyes on Giovanni, she shouted as she took off. I'll be back. She lifted off the ground and into the sky. The smoking plane sailed overhead, and Nikki did her best to stay with it.